it's an independent body. The fact that Dr. Dr. Jagdio, make sure we take care, you've got a few months left in office. We don't want to inherit you bringing in foreign teachers. Let's take care of our teachers. Let's take care of our workers. Let's review the contract workers. It's billions of dollars, millions of dollars in our 2011 budget going to contract workers that are doing some of the same work our public servants can do. Let's take care of them first, and you will see a better country. The fact that we will work together. The fact that we will be more prosperous. The fact that we will have a better life. And that's, again, the simple Guyanese dream that we're looking for as we reflect on our 41st birthday as a republic. Yes, you're on the air. Yes, hello. Hello? Yes. Good night, Mr. Peter Ramsu. Good night, ma'am. How are you? Yes, you are the fittest person to be the president for our country. What do you think about that? Well, I appreciate your, your compliment. I mean, it's not about uh, Peter Ramsu alone. The fact that it's a team of professionals that will run this country. You know, none of us need anything from the system. Any one of us in government should be servants of society. Anyone holding a ministerial job or any top official job have to be serving Guyana. You should not be looking for handouts. And you ought to be qualified if you want to be in education. You know what? I would never put a, a person that has not been a teacher to be the Minister of Education. Someone that has not sit in our classrooms. Someone that has not gone through what it's like to suffer through a blackboard in the middle of our classrooms, one who has not been able to get all of the, the, the tools necessary. You need qualified individuals to run our ministries, our government. We need to reduce government, but the fact that it's all of us working together, you, the caller, and I appreciate your compliment, but the fact that you two joining in this effort to take our country back will be what makes this country a better tomorrow. Yes, you're on the air. Good night, Mr. Ramsar. Good night. Um, a couple of years ago, the European government gave us a rice grant, 11 point something million euros. Mm -hmm. I don't quite remember how the money was spent. On the rice grant? Yes. yes. That was to help pay rice farmers did. And I never hear they come up with any idea of how it was spent. Well, we, we have not had a, a good accountability and transparency in anything. You know, in the 2010 budget, for example, we saw 10, .10 billion spent on, say, roads. We had billions spent on those industries such as rice. But in 2011, you see the same amount of money, again, for Hope Canal, for roads, for same things that you saw in previous budget. So because of the lack of accountability and the corruption, we have significant corruption in this country. And that's not Peter Ramsroop saying that. We have international organizations that says we are ranked one of the highest countries of corruptions in the world. So we have been paying high taxes. Many of us know of the high tax system that we've been paying. We are all working now to fill out our tax forms. And this is not of a GRA. I think GRA is having to do their job, but the fact is, it's the policy makers that says we've got to pay 16% VAT, 33 and a third percent pay taxes, 5.6% NIS, and all of us got to get ready to pay our car license and fitness coming up here program. When this government took over Guyana, we were 22 years old. And you know the 22-year-old young individual right now, they're excited, they're looking at their career, they're looking at their future. Some of them are in university, some of them can't find jobs, some of them looking to leave our country. At 22, maybe that's when the government took over. Some of us may have been like that. But what have they done from 22 to 41 to ensure that those young 22-year-old today have a better life and a better future right here in our country? Again, when I mentioned the teachers having to import, the fact, why not give our teachers duty-free so they can have a car to get to school on time? Why not give them land? Uh, as part of the program. Why not increase their salaries to a competent salary so they don't need to go look elsewhere for a job? So that money that would have be spent to import teachers and the trade union, I'm very upset and disappointed that you are not standing up for the rights of our people and the rights of our teachers. Instead of spending that money of importing, we should be looking at taking care of our own. Yes, Cora, you're on the air. Uh, it's nice that you're talking about 
education and I need to pick up an education. You there? Yes, I'm here. It is almost an insult. It's an insult. With this country doing so well in education before that this government who's in position nearly 20 years ago to say that they... This is an insult. Oh, you know, yes. you, I'm sure you would have heard of Joe Valachi from the Valachi Papers. Yes. Valachi said there can be no continued illegality without corrupt or inept officials. What are they do? So that if you have this illegality with teachers and, and nonsense going on all the time, somebody, I don't know what they're doing or they're corrupt. What are they do? Thank you. It's, it's, it's a disrespect for people. It's a disrespect that a president, Dr. Dr. Jack Dio, can even consider importing teachers to our country. Dr. Dr. Jack Dio needs to listen to you, the caller, the fact that we have great teachers. We have many teachers that have left. Why not try to recruit them back? Why not open the doors back to a remigration of teachers, our own? Tell them, you know what, you come back, we will raise all our teachers' salaries to a level that is comparable. If we're bringing teachers back, which should be Guyanese teachers, offer those positions, we should pay them a decent wage, just like we should be paying our teachers today. Yes, you're on the air. Hello? I said good evening. Good evening, how are you? Fine as usual. That's good. Are you a Guyanese? You're asking me if I'm a Guyanese? Yes, I just need, need to hear from your lips. I am a proud... No, 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 no. I'm a proud... I No, no, let me answer you. Are you I'm a proud Guyanese. Okay. I heard it from your own lips. That yes. Said that you are out of this country for over a period of 20 years. Now you're back and you've got so much talk in your... I've been back since what 2001. Have, what yes. What have you done for Guyana? Seeing that you're a proud Guyanese, what yes. have you ever done mm -hmm. for Guyana? Tell the nation, yes. you are not fit to run for president, more or less being a presidential candidate. You don't have what it takes to be that. Good. Uh, well, what, what do you think, what do what do you think you it should know. take to run the country? Do you agree <laughs> the fact that we should be importing teachers? Exactly. Do you agree that we should be spending $10.1 billion on roads yes. that you have craters? Do you believe the floods that we have today yes. in yes. Georgetown yes. is the, what we should be doing? Only do you believe that? Let me hear. You ever said this, this evening, and since you're on the air, the only intelligent thing you have ever said, and I will give you due, is that our president ought not to recruit teachers from abroad. Good. What they should do, like mm -hmm. what you said, Understand? Is try and recruit those that or that have been uh, come out from time to time for, from the retirement age. Yes. That is the only sensible thing that I have ever do. You. Have well, I'm glad you compliment me on one thing. Thank you for your call. I appreciate it. You, yes. Thank you. I can do for you. You have to do for your country. Good. Do yes. Remember that. Yes. Thank you. I'm talking about look crap. Good. Thank you very much. But the. The caller did agree. I mean, he may have disagreed with Peter Ramsroop and may have felt that I've not done anything for Guyana and I can list, uh, and I don't need to boast about what I've done for, for my country. Uh, the fact that all of us are work hard every day to make this nation a better place, and even those in government. But the fact is, is the caller did agree that the government is slapping our face by saying they're Im importing teachers. And, and, and I do respect this call, by the way. Yes, you're on here. Hi, good evening, Mr. Peter Armstrong. Good evening. Um, well, you know, you're, um, you have your, your program and stuff here. You're trying to um, garner support for the election. But concerning national elections, you feel that um, national elections would be held as such? Um, yes, I mean, all I did meet with GCOM today, and I had a very good meeting with, with the chairman of GCOM and his commissioners or his staff today, I can tell you that. Uh, they are well prepared. They believe that, uh, that we, we will have one more chance of registration from the 4th of April, and uh, they will be ready for elections in August. So the president has up to the 28th of September, mandatory, to call elections, and uh, the chairman of GCOM did say that he, he believed that unless something uh, significant happen, uh, the law is the law, and we will have elections, uh, uh, you know, by August. I have a question. Yes. Um, is there a possibility that um, you may call it? 
Yes, I believe in a government of national unity. I believe in working as a team. Uh, we are prepared to uh, present our plan to the nation, but we are in, in, in many conversations with, uh, with all of us that Guyana is not about one person, it's not about Peter Ramsroop or his political ambition, it's about all of us, not just politicians. And I tell the politicians, and I have told many of them even today, that it's not politically that we've got to come together. We've got to come together with a common cause, a common goal, that the fact that we do believe the Constitution has to be changed, to take away the executive powers, to have constituency-based elections. Uh, we believe we have to have an economic plan that is uh, opportunity for all without discrimination against one race or one type of people. And as long as we have that common vision, any one of us, and i be forced to tell you, I'd be, I'd be willing to work with anyone that have that commitment to our country. Okay, I wish you and your party the best in the Thank you. Okay. Yes, you're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Ramsrup. I've been following your, your, your presentation, the Switcher Channels. Um, I have three things I want, I want to ask you about personally. One, I remember back in the days when you tried to do this um, packaging yes. assignment thing on the East Bank. First, yes. answer that question. What became of that project? Well, we got off the ground significantly, but the government, as you know, if you go back in the, the history books, uh, refused to... Uh, credit our facility permanently. Uh, we were about to bring in uh, the uh, cargo airlines, uh, but we couldn't even get past civil um, the civil commission for that were handling that license. We lost, I can tell you, millions of dollars, investors' money, my money, uh, in that project because we we had every step of the way we ran into problems. And I consider it not a not a failure on the government or failure on Peter Ramsrew, but a failure of the system that says, you know, we cannot treat investors that way. We need more and more of our people coming back to the country. Welcome them with open arms. And But yes, but the idea and the, the process is still so valid today, and I hope that even someone can take that and move it forward. Okay, moving on. Now, you... We, we quickly, we're running out of time. Okay, but the teachers and so forth. Yes. Would it not be worth it to, since the government has identified clearly deficiencies in this mm -hmm. system, would it not be there for, even if they want to use overseas engineers to do this draft of proposal or draft some sort of a strategy, they can even use NSERT, if, if, if um, my, my understanding of NSERT's function is correct, to implement the training program right into the CPC program to upgrade the teaching situation, to upgrade the teaching methods? Brilliant. I, brilliant. That's absolutely, and I, 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 I support that 100%. Yes, if we need to improve our facilities and our training, yes, bring in the trainers to train the training. Because this would yes. even, even super, uh, supersede, like, bringing back teachers that we had exported to Botswana and yes. South Africa. Yes, to yes, yes, and that's what we're all saying. Yes. But thank you for your call. I've got, to, I've got to get ending here. I'll take one more quick call, and then uh, we'll close the program. Yes, you're on the air. Hi, how are you doing, Peter? Good, good. Just quickly. There's a letter in the press today about examining different exam economic strategies. Uh-huh. Um, the fact is um, we have imposed upon us the Washington consensus by U.S. through the IMF. Um, we talk of the private sector the engine of growth. Yes. But they have serious limitations in terms of culture, um, in finance, and so on. So, uh, the, Dr. Jalen spoke about the sector economy with the cooperative to private sector in the state. Don't you think we should also have the state involvement because the private sector may not invest in certain areas because of race, because of fear, because the profitability of particular products is not high enough? Yeah, I agree with you. I believe it, it, it has to be a joint, right. a joint effort, public and private sector, in partnerships. Yeah, because the world has changed. I mean, I you know, was a capitalist by heart, you know, but I've realized that, that there's certain things, certain infrastructure changes, certain investment has to be public-private sector. And I think you can then do what we call bill own and operate and transfer, yeah. is the fact that we can work towards, you know, turning it over from state to private sector or private sector to state based on the type of industries. I'm glad to hear yeah. that because yes. as soon as you make any criticism of your present system, mm -hmm. I remember the job and say, look what happened to Russia. We did with yes. Us. Yes, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. But as we close the program, I really do believe that our country is a great country. Working together, we can make that difference uh, on our 41st Republic to realize that vision, to renew our dream that Guyana is a place for all of us. Regardless if you left for 20 years and moved back to our country, regardless whether you're living in the United States and send money to your family every month, 
regardless if you remain in Guyana and struggled to take care of your children because of lack of opportunities, uh, if your teacher that have left that wants to come back, if your teacher that here that wants to stay, these are the things that we should be looking at to ensure that we all have that economic freedom, the prosperity, the unity that we all deserve as a nation at 41. God bless you and God bless this beautiful republic.